ahead, finish your fantasy. I'll wait. <laughs> Fanny? Hi, how are you? <laughs> You're a long... Can you see it from up there? That's a long way up there. You, were you first in line, second in line, or what? <laughs> Beg your pardon? In the middle. This is going nowhere, isn't it? <laughs> that applause lasted longer than the Hagler Hearn fight last night. <laughs> Did it, was anybody up there to see the fight? Were you? What did you have to pay to get into that fight? The tickets were going for two to six hundred dollars or something. Was it worth it for eight and a half minutes? I know Hagler won. Yeah. I'm going to legally change my name this week to Marvelous Johnny Carson. Maybe not. Hearns is already getting ready for a rematch. He's having his head fitted with an airbag. You know, they made five million dollars a piece for that. It's a lot, of, a lot of bread, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, Hearns was not the only one to take a beating on April 15th, come to think of it. I know that's why you were all here tonight. You took what you had left after paying your income tax, <laughs> bought a ticket for the Tonight Show. <laughs> How many of you know, did you ever wonder why the government picked April 15th for income tax day? It is, it is the anniversary, the day the Titanic went down. <laughs> and that joke went down also. <laughs> How many of you filed or actually mailed yesterday? <laughs> they said 40% of all the Americans do not get their taxes in until the deadline, which was midnight uh, yesterday. And they had the lines at the post office, which stayed open until midnight. It was so busy in the post office, they actually had to put up extra this window closed signs. <laughs> Hello, Tom. I didn't know you were here tonight. I, where's, 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 I mean, I knew you were here when I walked out. Where's Doc tonight? I think he's finishing up in Vegas. <laughs> what, wasn't he here at all last week? Oh, he was here, yes. Yeah. Well, wasn't he working in Las Vegas last week, too? That's true, yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, but because he's finishing up tonight is why he's not here tonight. But he wasn't finished last week. Yes. I, tonight he's finished. Isn't he? What? Last week he wasn't finished. Ah. <laughs> Why don't I get trapped into these conversations? I always come out the loser. I was talking about income tax. Did you see the president and Mrs. Reagan made the, uh, their income tax return public? They have an interesting uh, tax return. Where else do you ever see Social Security number one? <laughs> and under occupy, got a refund. They got a refund. But he, I think they got about a, what was it? Right in the paper, thirteen or $14,000 refund. No, because they wrote off as a loss the American farmer, and they took that as a <laughs> uh, and No, they, they had the tax return on television. They had a big blow-up of it, and under occupation, the president uh, had president of the United States, and Nancy put down, having a wonderful time. <laughs> oh. That was the occupation. <laughs> Anyway, did you, did you see the fight last night? You were out of town last yeah. night also. It was a good fight, actually, but the next question is, who is Marvin Hagler going to fight next? And uh, President Reagan has offered the man who set up his German travel plans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many of you are aware of the... Obviously, not too many. Not too many. <laughs> There was a lot of controversy. There was a lot of controversy because apparently the president plans to travel to Germany and he was going to lay a wreath on the term, on the term, on the tomb <laughs> of German soldiers. Yeah. And a lot of people don't think that's such a good move. And if that wasn't bad enough, he also was going to lay a wreath of sauerkraut on Rommel's grave. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'll just... Bought, drop by Spandau and say hello to Rudy, too. Uh, anyway, obviously, uh, 
Uh, you'll probably have read that by tomorrow, and I'll try that joke again tomorrow night. <laughs> Did you know what is fascinating if you read the things in the papers? All of this information is coming back from Russia about Premier uh, Gorbachev, about how, I guess what, outgoing and uh, what a nice guy he is and charismatic. I did not believe it until I saw him on MTV. <laughs> was, it, was Stevie Wonder singing, We Are the World. <laughs> Gorbachev's version is a little bit different. It's called, We Want the World. <laughs> and I'm singing it very nicely. Anyway, I want to thank Joan Rivers for filling in last week. I watched Joan. I wish I could... Boy, she really... She asked questions that anybody else would be shot for. Yeah. She had little Drew Barrymore. Do you know Drew Barrymore? Mm -hmm. Ten years old. Joan asked her, how many lovers you been through? <laughs> okay, I won't keep you any longer. <laughs> uh, we got a good show tonight. We have a lovely young actress, Miss Amy Irving. Is with us tonight. We have... Uh, Young man. A young man who's a very clever ventriloquist. You probably remember he was on soap. Jay Johnson yeah. is with us. And very funny, very amusing author, Mr. Calvin Trillin, is here tonight. And a few other things. So stay where you are. We'll be right back. crowd that was wiped out all of yesterday, right? You're right. getting over it. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. Uh, we have uh, Amy Irving with us tonight. We have Ray Johnson. We have Calvin Trilling. And Doc, as you probably heard earlier, the reason he's not here is because he's finishing up in Las Vegas, or may have finished last week. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you have heard about the great unicorn controversy? Yeah. Okay. Now, let me explain for those of you who might not have seen it on the news. Apparently, Ringling Brothers Circus, which is just called Ring. Whatever happened to Barnum and Bailey? I don't know. Yeah. That was the, the well, tradition. When I was a kid, it was Ringling show. Brothers, Barnum and Bailey. And Barnum and Bailey, Bailey's the greatest show on earth. Yeah, what happened to them? They, they just call it Ringling Brothers now. Right. Well, I think well, they Barnum still use Bailey it in the ads. Out. They still use it in the ads, I think. Anyway, they are showing at Ringling Brothers Circus a unicorn, which, according to Ringling Brothers, is, uh, is genuine. Mm -hmm. Now, according to the dictionary, a unicorn is a fabled creature, usually represented as a horse with a single spiraled horn projecting from its forehead and often with a goat's beard and a lion's tail. Now, have you seen the unicorn that... Saw pictures, yes. You know, it looks it like looks something pretty you good, would sure. see. It, it look, some people say it's a goat. Circus officials say no, it's a yeah. genuine unicorn. It's gotten to the point where federal inspectors stepped in last week and declared that it's actually a goat whose horns were apparently transplanted and grafted together in infancy. Mm. Now, Ringling Brothers say no. Hmm. Mm. How many of you remember a story called um, A Unicorn in the Garden? Right. <laughs> that many, huh? It seems to be about the same amount that know about the president's trip to Germany. To, to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I brought this up, since nobody knows about it, but... When I heard that story, and I told uh, yeah. Mr. DeCorda and Mr. LaSalle this afternoon, I said, do you remember? The Did story? they remember? Uh, no, they didn't I don't remember. remember. Anybody in the band remember? Yeah. It's by... Who remembers? It's by James Thurber. It was called A Unicorn in the Garden. And would you like to hear this? It's Love a short story. Yeah, it sounds like a fascinating story. It is. And <clears throat> I find it particularly fascinating, and I'll tell you why. Right. A lady calls a mental hospital and says that her husband came in after breakfast one morning and said, there's a unicorn in the garden. And the people at the other end at the hospital said, well, that, that can't be true. A, a unicorn is a mythological beast, doesn't exist. She goes and tells her husband. Next morning, the husband comes in and says to the wife, I just saw a unicorn eating the flowers in the garden. And he keeps this up for about three days, and she calls the hospital back, and the attendants show up to take the husband away, to commit him. And they say, he says, why are you doing this? And he said, well, his wife, your wife called and said that you've been reporting that there's a unicorn in the garden. And the fellow says, you must be crazy. He said, everybody knows that a unicorn is a mythological beast. And they took the wife and committed her. <laughs> that 
throws the switch. So. I, I was, here I am so puzzled and perplexed, I can't imagine why you would find that interesting. Well, I just, I've re always Especially remember, you. Never I just mind that. I remember that story. <clears throat> now, anyway, you probably know, maybe you don't, because I'm going to explain <laughs> almost everything. <laughs> Take no chances. Many scientists uh, today are recombining what they call DNA. Mm. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Is it deal mm. new riblic acid? Anybody know? Yeah. Very close. <laughs> <laughs> man knew that, didn't know about Germany. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, they're doing all kinds of things, I guess. Uh, and private universities have patented gene splicing techniques. And we thought you might like to uh, be brought up to date on the latest results of crossbreeding living things. <laughs> like that play, Long Day's Journey into Night. You Just got getting it. ready for the bit. Well, th this, I, you do this to set this up. Yes. These are some of the things that sciences are, are working on. <laughs> Recently, scientists crossed a cow with a polar bear. Oh. And they got an animal that gives furry ice cream. <laughs> Uh, they crossed a pig with a porcupine and got cocktail weenies with the toothpicks already in them. Hey, how about that? <laughs> so higher class type of material, obviously. <laughs> Here's an interesting one. Of course, you will be the final judge of that. They crossed a stork with a sponge. They got a bird that brings babies and cleans up after them. <laughs> They crossed a worm with Shamu's daughter and got whale bait. <laughs> Look, we have no place to try these out. <laughs> Look, if I could go to Bakersfield, you know, for a week, try these out, then when we'd come here, they'd all work. But this is, this is it. You people are hearing these for the first time and disliking it. <laughs> they crossed a squirrel with a yuppie got an animal that stores its nuts in the trunk of its BMW. <laughs> now you're talking. They actually crossed Joan Collins with 12 men, got an episode of Dynasty. <laughs> they crossed Prince with an IRS employee. And what do you think they got? I don't know. A purple pain. <laughs> Here's the most interest, intriguing one of all. <laughs> They actually crossed a dinosaur with a virgin and got something that's really extinct. <laughs> it's amazing what science can do in gene splitting. <laughs> they crossed a fox with a hen with an owl and got a foxy chick with nice hooters. <laughs> They crossed the commander of the space shuttle with marvelous Marvelin Hagler and got one bad astronaut. <laughs> and... <laughs> they crossed a seal with a Beverly Hills housewife and got something that can balance its old nose on its new nose. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have finished with that one. <laughs> they crossed a TWA pilot with Boy George Yes. Got a transworld vestite. Hey, how you doing? Oh. Bail out just in time. Okay. We got you now. Uh, maybe not. Uh, Amy Irving will join us shortly. Uh, Jay Johnson and his little friend will join us shortly. Calvin Trillin will join us later Soon after, after that. that. So it's shortly. shortly. My first guest, I'm sure you all know, she's a lovely, very fine young actress, and she made her acting debut at nine months. I'm gonna have to check into that. What would you do at nine months? What, play a baby, I suppose. 
And she's been busy ever since. I hate a loafer. Start right off and work right through. Uh, some of her movies include Yentl, Mickey and Maud, and she's starring in Heartbreak House, which is currently airing on cable. Would you welcome Miss Amy Irving? You look very pretty tonight. Thanks. Very I need much. the stool. You need? Oh, would you like to look at our little footstool? Okay. We always give stools to expectant mothers and oh, extremely short people. Uh, <laughs> you said on this card here, and I hadn't read this before, made her acting debut at nine months. What did you do at nine months? Was this a commercial or something? No, I was on the stage. I was brought on stage by my father, who was playing Rumpelstiltskin. You're kidding. I was the baby that he wanted to wanted, and in, in exchange right. for all the. Spun gold and so all. he carried you out on stage at nine months. Yeah. You've been busy ever since? Yeah, I had my first speaking role when I was about two and a half. You're kidding. Yeah, Princess Primrose, but all I could say was Princey Rosie. That's the Prince best Rosie. I could do. At two and a half? Mm-hmm. Princey Rosie. Yeah. Is this something you always wanted to do? Always. Never considered anything else no, besides I, being an actress? No, I, I think I would have done it if there was anything else. It's not an easy business to choose, but... Uh, no, I've, I've always wanted to. I had such a great time growing up in it. Yeah. Well, you were around it then all the time. Yeah, my which, father had a theater. Yeah, which My helps. mother was the lead actress in the company, and uh, we were a family acting group. And they never tried to dissuade you? I, I suppose actors wouldn't because they, they enjoy it. Well, they did, they did uh, say if you're going to be serious about it, do it right, and train for four years, which I did. Went yeah. off to London and all that. You look real pretty because you are... Well, you were in Heartbreak House when you were... Yes, I was, you I was... You know, you, we, I've said this before on, on the show, but you know that some years ago, and it probably is not more than 15 years, that you could not say the word pregnant on television. Really? If that's, I find that mind-boggling. Were you allowed to come on pregnant? <laughs> yeah. Sure, remember when Lucille Ball? That's true. But even in the old I Love Lucy shows, they could never show, and I don't think they ever did in all those episodes, she and her husband in, in, in bed. They were separate beds. No, now you go to movies and, good lord. You yeah. wonder how she got pregnant. Yeah, you wonder how she got pregnant, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so you're about, uh... I'm six weeks away. Yeah. Was it difficult working when you were um, pregnant in pictures? Well, we had done it originally on Broadway the year before, so the rehearsals were more brush-up, thank goodness, but, uh, I was pretty sick in the first trimester. Since then, I've never felt better in my life. I can't wait to do it again, but, uh... The first trimester, the saltines didn't work. I had saltines? to suck. Yeah, that's what that's what a lot of women do to curb the nausea. Yeah. I had to suck lemons. That was the only thing that would work was to suck lemons. Then I still would, in the middle of a scene, have to run. Yeah. Out. Yeah. I just, I just. Well, I didn't just. When I did Mickey and Maude, my right. character was. You're pregnant. Was throwing up through the whole time as well. So it so. came nice and easy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's real method acting. Yeah. I guess so. Prepared. Yeah. Prepared motherhood. I understand you got, the, you got the maternity wardrobe from that picture also? I just... did. It was lucky. At the time that I got pregnant, both my sister and my sister-in-law, my brother's wife, were pregnant. So the whole, the wardrobe got spread around the country. Yeah, nice. <laughs> it was great. And I saved some for myself and uh, wear it. Now, for people who don't know, you and your live-in companion, is that the way to put it? That works. Yeah. Uh, Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Um, is, is the father of, uh, of your child, and you've been going together for what, about eight or nine years? Something like that? Something like that. Yeah. I suppose people ask you, and I hate to sound like, you know, old fashioned, did you ever consider marriage? Well, or is that too we personal? decided we weren't going to make a move until we got some advice from you. <laughs> <laughs> One for the pregnant lady. <laughs> Funny, I knew you'd ask. You're, abs <laughs> You're absolutely right, yeah. You could say to me, well, why did you get divorced? I guess just as easily, right? I wouldn't. No, but you. But you. <laughs> so I didn't mean. <laughs> A two. A two. I didn't, I so you got me out gun. You can't pick on a pregnant I lady. I figured in this situation have... I could throw out everything right there. You're, absolute, <laughs> you're absolutely right. Yeah. Anyway, you, you just you just wanted to wait, right? Well, yeah. We we uh, we don't really know where we are, where we stand. That we're not making any statement saying we're not getting married. It's just the baby came first, and yeah. uh, as long as we've gone this far, you know, 
Maybe the baby would like to be at the wedding. I mean, we can, we can work it out that way. Why not? Yeah. Times have changed a lot, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. I also, I don't want to, I don't want to have to have a special wedding dress and things like that. Yeah. Well, I guess that makes sense. And, uh, we're real married. It's okay. It's all legal and everything. The baby's his and... Yeah. Well, that's the real thing that really makes any difference, I guess. It's how I you feel so. about it each other. It seems kind of redundant at this point. Yeah, it doesn't it, though? <laughs> yeah, what do you want, a boy or a girl? This could be your first time? It'll be first, yeah. Uh, either. Just yeah. good, healthy, sound child. Take I want deep. both, so I want to keep doing it till I have both. Are you taking all the special classes and all yes, that? Yes, we are. The Lamaze classes, they're very funny. <laughs> what do you I, mean? <laughs> well, it's just, uh, it's a situation that you don't normally get into with, um, with the person you live with. Uh, my favorite part now is we're at the stage where we're breathing through pain. And Stephen will say, all of a sudden, he'll, he'll, he'll grab me and he'll go like, let's do Lamaze now. Because what you do is he pinches you and you spend a minute doing the breathing and it goes because harder it... and harder. And, uh, and it's like a game now. It's like we're two little kids with this little so stopwatch. So let's go through the... We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Who's here, Amy? Jay Johnson and Calvin Schoen will be on shortly. Have you talked about uh, names yet? Yeah. Did you know I, something I just thought of? Excuse me, you interrupt. Okay. When my second, my, my first son was born, you had to have the child named before they would let you leave the hospital. They which, still like you to name. Do they still pretty, do pretty that? Quick, I believe. I don't know. I haven't got to that part yet. Yeah, and I remember I went and changed. I that had to go to court and change the names later because we just gave them a name. But I didn't know that you had to do that. You still have to do that. They like to have the name, I guess, on the. They haven't to told me yet. Since we know it, we're not worried about that. <laughs> so, have you sat around and discussed what you might yeah, name the child? we did. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, it was written in the L.A. Times that the wrong name that I gave, and it was more upsetting than seeing a misprint of my own to see your child's name spelt wrong. What did they say you were going to... They said I was naming my... Uh, our girl, Sophia, and it's actually Sophie. Huh. So... We're using Spielberg's for the last name, right. Spielberg. And Max, if it's a boy. Max. Max. Yeah. Has nothing to do with any family, anything. We just... Names we like. To the max. Yeah, that's not nice. Yeah, max. <laughs> Did you ever change your children's name? I don't no. know why I'm asking that. No. What was the name you used to get out of the hospital? Shirley. Shirley. <laughs> no, no. I knew you'd have something. No, I had. <laughs> I had. I originally was going to call one of the boys Barry, which became Corey. And the other was uh, Kim. But they sounded like a girl's name, Kimberly, so I changed them both. I don't know why I thought of that. You worked with your mother in three pictures, didn't you? Four, I Four pictures, Carrie and uh, Suckle Rose, Huckle, Suckle Rose. Competition, Mickey and Maud. Yeah. And we just did um, Glass Menagerie on the stage last summer together. Is it, are you under more pressure when you work with a, a parent who's an actress? No, uh, having no. To, my uh, having takes... to be good or does she sit and give you a, well, advice? And... My mother is my, my, my toughest judge, so I do have to be my best for her and behave very well with her. But... She's also my best friend, so it's easy, it's fun. That's good. Yeah. You mentioned before, I was saying during the break, I said, you're such a good actress, and you say, I like, I like it. I love it. You love it. What does you love about it? Now, that sounds like a, a sophomore question, but I mean, a lot of people say they are terrified when they act. I know actors who are professional actors and yet become terrified when they're out there. I guess there is part of that, but I think any challenge that you can that you can overcome is a, is a wonderful feeling, but uh, it's more than that. It's the exploration, it's the give and take with the director, it's, it's, it's creating a character that, uh, right. that you couldn't think of on your own, and uh, you get help, and uh, working with other people, it's, it's, a, it's very therapeutic, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Heartbreak House, I had to get my heart broken eight shows a week on Broadway, and, you're, and you go through the whole show, three hours, the... The Showtime version is two right. hours, <laughs> but uh, the Broadway show is three hours, and every night you're going through, and at the end, finding a peace of mind, and whatever's going on in your real life seem, uh, it gets kind of worked out. I mean, it's, yeah. it is like going through some kind of therapy. Oh, you, you think, bring that into, you into bring the performance. It and you and, and you explore it, and you, and you work it out, and you feel great by the end of it. Do you feel more comfortable playing a role than you do being Amy Irving? Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, but no. Not at all. I feel very comfortable being Amy Irving. As a matter of fact, I, I think the role I'm playing right now is my favorite. Um, I've wanted to be a mother for a long time, and uh, I, feel, I feel, even now before the baby's born, I feel more fulfilled than any acting role's ever done. 
Yeah, you mentioned me. that a moment ago to me. Yeah. You said you don't miss the acting right now. No, I thought I thought I'd. I mean, I've always been a hard worker, and I I, I work nonstop, and I, I I've always been very stimulated by the work, and I couldn't care less about working right now. I'm so busy getting getting ready for the baby, and yeah. and be, preparing life as a family, and uh, and I really. I know I'll work again. Oh, sure. But uh, all I can think of is spending time with my family right now. Yeah, men have always wondered what... We'll never know, of course. What it must be like to be a mother. Now, that sounds like a dumb question, but... Haven't you ever wondered what it's like to be a man? <laughs> Tell me, think about it. If you could be a man for a day, maybe that would be solve a lot of problems. If every Probably guy could help. be a woman for a week to see what emotions go through her mind and every woman could be a man and see what his emotions are because I don't know the think there's any other way that you can really know I think women pretty much know what's going on with a man yeah <laughs> yeah I'm gonna think of it you're right <laughs> but women always seem to read men easier than men read women yeah I think there is definitely a, a, a sensitivity there that I don't negate the sensitivity uh, in men. I just think there is I think more you're right, exploration that, in their thoughts in that area. I think you're right. Even Freud. I always, I don't know much about Freud, but I remember one thing Sigmund Freud said about women. What do they want? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's baffling to most men. And that man was one of the great psychiatrists. What do they want? He didn't know. <laughs> Got him on the couch night and day, and he never figured it out. <laughs> we'll take a... That I remember in Thurber's uh, story, but nobody else. We'll take it right back. Thank you, Tom. We are back. I'm sure... I'm sure you remember this next young man, if you were a viewer of Soap a few years back. He's a, a very skilled ventriloquist. This is his first time with us. Uh, he appears frequently at the Comedy and Magic Club in Hermosa Beach. He'll be at the Improvisation in San Diego the week starting May 7th, and then he'll be at Caesars in Lake Tahoe May 16th through the 26th. Would you welcome, please, Jay Johnson and Bob. Jay. Nice, is it? This is it. Yeah, I wear my good shoes tonight. Isn't this very nice? That's very nice. Yeah, those are new shoes. Yeah, I stole the shoes. Got them cheap after they canceled Fantasy Island. Very nice. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a question, Johnson? You can ask me anything in the world, Bob. I feel good tonight. Yeah, I do too. Can I ask you a very kind of personal question? Sure. Yeah, what is it? Well, it's just here on the Tonight Show, they got all kinds of talent. That's right. Yeah, this is it. This is it. You can't get much better than this, boy. This is it. Yeah, yeah. So, so. So we got all kinds of stuff, and I just wondered, with all the talent that they got on the show, what the heck is it that you're doing here? What? What do you do for a living, huh? Uh, well, what is your job? How do you get your cash, your dough, your dinero? Well, <laughs> well I, I throw my voice. Oh, good, 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 good. You gonna do something tonight? Well, yeah, yeah, I, I thought I might. When? What do you mean, when? When are you gonna work? I just did. What? I just, we're just then. What do you mean? Right there. Then when you say that, that that's when I work. What? Right there. Right. When you say that, huh? Right there. Right there. Right, 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 right. Ah, ah, right. Ah. Right there. That, that's it. Ah, right there. Ah, that's when I work. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's, that's my job. What do, you, what, do you, what do you mean? I talk for you. Get out of here. No, that's it. Uh, I, I'm not proud of it, but that's my job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can say bottle of beer without moving my lips. Oh, good, good, good. I guess there's a lot of call for that at your age, isn't there? Well, you, <laughs> you don't know anything about ventriloquism, do you? No, I tell you what, I'll give you a little demonstration. You call to George underneath the stage, you'll call back to us, we will hear him. That is ventriloquism. Do what? Call to George underneath the stage. I can do it. Yeah, yeah, just say, hey, George. Good thinking. Yeah, yeah. Hey, George. Yell it out, huh? He has to hear you through the stage. Gonna hurt your throat. I don't care. Yeah, just yell it out. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, George! What do you want? <laughs> Who was that? That was George. Get out of here. No, no, it's George down there. You're doing it. I'm not. No, he's down there. He's uh, asking me how he's doing. How you doing down there, George? All right. No, come on. Wait, no, no, he's down there with his dog. Hey, Rover. <laughs> I hate dogs. I used to be a tree, which, yeah, I did. <laughs> I 
It's a dirty trick. Hey, you want to learn how to do that? Sure. Okay, I'll tell you what you do. I mean, the first thing you have to do is learn to talk without moving your lips. You think you can do that much? I can do that. Okay, yes, yeah, sit right there. Yeah, and you look out at the audience. You say, hello. You don't move your lips. I'll tell you how well you're doing. Yeah, and then I'll give you a few pointers, okay? Hey, okay. you look out there and say, hello, don't move your lips. I can do it. Okay, you can do it. I can do it. That's the way it works. Yeah, all right, go ahead. Say, hello. They're staring. I know that. Yeah. Johnny can see your hand on my back. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, just go ahead. Say hello. Don't move your lips. This is tougher than he looks. Just try. Blah, blah, blah. I'll, I'll give you some corners. Go right ahead. Hello. You moved your mouth. I did not. know you did. Yeah, I saw you move your lips. I did not. You did, didn't I? I saw you move your lips. I'll get your hand off the gizmo. It's not my job. Do it yourself. Now, do it again. I do not want to see your lips move. You're not going to see my mouth move. You're not going to see nothing. This is, a du this is easy. I read the comic book. All right. Hello? You didn't see it. Wait a minute. Did you see it? Wait a minute. You said it. Wait, wait, wait. I, 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 I got an idea here. Yeah, I see this tape. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this tape. I'm going to seal your mouth shut. That way you can't move your lips, and we'll see how well you do. Do what? Put this over your mouth. You kinky devil. No, just, <laughs> just put it on. And that way, see, now the point is now you have to make it very clear so that even the people in the back can understand what you're saying. Do you understand that? <laughs> yes, you will. See, I started this way. It's the way you learn. Okay? All right. Now, just look out there. Take a deep breath. That's a boy. Now say, hello. <laughs> Bob, see, nobody's going to understand that. See, you have to make it clear, distinct. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> what? The tape. Oh, yeah, this is stupid. What a rip off, what a stupid act to do on a Tonight Show. Come on. What? It's stupid. What do you mean, stupid? Read my lips. It is stupid. <laughs> you come on here, you put tape on my mouth, and then you go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you're not working half as hard, and they're supposed to think that is good? <laughs> come on! <laughs> it's not a good trick now? What's a good trick? You know, no good trick? What is it? You take that tape. Yeah? Yeah, you put it on your mouth. <laughs> Make me say, hello, how are you? Good to see you. You got yourself a trick. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Come on! Come on, great and trickless teacher. Let's see a little example. Come on! Come on! I can do it. No, I'm not going to use your tape. I don't know where you've been. All right, now look. I'm going to put this over my mouth. And you will see that it is just as clear and distinct as it is right now. You understand that? I can do it crystal clear. All right, just do it. All right. No, I will. I will. I will. Just be quiet. I said you can't do it. Nobody can talk with they do their mouth. They can't be done, and you can just knock that stuff off right now. Quit. <laughs> Something's wrong here. <laughs> Would like to? Oh, my God. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. It's done hello, hello, and I got stuck like this. <laughs> Give me my voice back. I can't. I feel stupid. You look natural. <laughs> I got into y'all saying higher, 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 you sing lower, 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 we got together. I think it'll work. I hope so. I can't go on like this. Here we go. <coughs> higher, 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 Your turn. Okay, okay. Lower, 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 lower. Uh, that's it. All right. Uh, that's our time. Uh, thanks for being here. Good, good night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. 
My next guest has been with us uh, a number of times. He's a very funny gentleman who writes for both The New Yorker and Nation magazine. He has a new book out called With All Disrespect. Would you welcome Mr. Calvin Trillin? Calvin? Does that bother you when you're introduced as a funny man? Sometimes there's a danger in that. No, except I, I suppose uh, people expect a fright wig or some. Props yeah, you come out like Ronald yeah. McDonald yeah. or something. And you yes. come out and look very normal. And I was interested, by the way, in your gene splitting animals. Do uh, you? Yeah, I unfortunately wasn't in the audience. You seem to, I, yes, you. I was, you uh, seem to be a. You, uh, you seem to be a cult of one. Right. Yes. Well, I've been looking for years for that. Uh, the animal that these restaurants get the uh, surf and turf off of, um, which uh, turns out I finally realized it's a it's a tiny aquatic Hereford um, that can uh, both move and draw flies underwater. That's right. They're hard to find though. Yes, now you know how it goes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Had to try one out, huh? <laughs> you should have learned something from my doing this beforehand. <laughs> Somebody told me you have a, a you might you have yeah. a, a hair right. coming right. down right there in front oh, of you. Yeah. That was my fright wig. I did know. I see that was your <laughs> disguise. Um, somebody told me you got a raise at Nation Magazine. Is this true, or is this well, too a, personal? No, to it's talk a kind about? of no. It's not too personal. It's a kind of a misunderstanding. Um, originally, when I went to work for the Nation, the editor, the wily and parsimonious Victor Navasky, uh -huh. said when I asked him what he was going to pay me for each column, he said uh, something in the high two figures. Um, <laughs> so. People think I've been getting the high two figures all these years, but uh, I didn't accept that offer, particularly when I found that, that uh, his interpretation of the high two figures included $65. Um, so I turned it over to, I have one of those um, um, hardball agents, those tough guys. Right. Uh, Robert Slowly Lesher is the name of my <laughs> agent. And um, so I, uh, I turned over and I said, play, play hardball slowly. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> Slowly got him up to a hundred. Got him up. Yeah. So, so I get a hundred now. Yeah. I uh, I had talked about a race, but the Wiley and Parsimonious Victor Navasky. Um, <laughs> Wiley and Parsimonious. Yes. Huh? He reminded me I was saving a lot of money on tuxedos, uh, which is true in a manner of speaking. I I have my college tuxedo, and I um, I bought it in college because I divided up the number of times I needed it in college by how much it would cost to buy a tuxedo, and I figured it was cheaper than renting. Right. This is a fancy college, as you can yeah. imagine. Uh, I didn't even think about wearing it after college, but uh, now it gets cheaper with each wearing. The amortization. Yeah, really I'm, is. it's about uh, oh, 48 cents a wearing now. <laughs> Well, most you people, try to rent a tuxedo for 48 40, cents yes. these days, you can't you go do to it. a bad place. I uh, wear it sometimes in. Uh, Odd places just to keep going, you know. Uh, you know, sometimes a hog roast or a divorce hearing or something. As long just, as it costs you, yeah, just nothing. Uh, yeah. Sure. Well, most people would envy you being able to get into your clothes. Yeah, I'm proud of that. I'd be a little prouder if I didn't have reason to believe that the pants are somebody else's pants. Um, there was a fellow in my class at college named Joe LeBeau, um, a rather rotund fellow, if rotund. you must know, right? Um, and in one of those uh, big parties where everybody slept in a dormitory or something, we, I believe, came away with each other's pants. Um, I tried to persuade him that we could just trade, but I think uh, the phrase, uh, not vulnerable to reason, was invented mm -hmm. for Joe LeBeau. Uh, I don't know where he is now. I think he's a judge in California or something. Yeah. Um, so I, it's a little irritating when I pull on these voluminous pants. Um, on the other hand, it kind of makes my evening thinking of Joe trying to pull my pants. <laughs> yeah. He probably rents now a good deal. I think he might probably rent, does. and not for 48 cents yeah. either. You, you write a lot about politics. Do you yes. ever campaign for anybody? No, I once offered a, um, a candidate for mayor of Buffalo what I thought was a perfect can uh, campaign slogan for that city, never been indicted. Um, <laughs> You are going to get the mail from Buffalo. I already have on my desk today letters from councilmen and then members of the establishment in Buffalo saying I have treated Buffalo unfairly. Because oh, no. I have made references to Buffalo. I haven't spent a lot of time in Buffalo. I'm sure it's a fine city. It, it just sounds, it's a name that just, well, it's like Bakersfield. It actually, engenders. Uh, uh, 
I, w I was in Buffalo, um, and there's a man who thinks that the whole problem is the name, and he pronounces it to Buffalo. Buffalo. <laughs> yes. And, uh, May if we put an ox and grub over the old buffalo. Right. Buffalo. Buffalo. Uh, he says that all those jokes about the snow and everything are because of the name, but now people say, uh, how's the uh, snoo there? How's the snoo? Uh, in buffalo. Uh, actually, they're kind of pace setters, because it turns out, I didn't realize until Edwin Meese got confirmed, that uh, never been indicted uh, is a motto for the Attorney General, really. I mean, that would, uh, you could state his qualifications that yeah. way. Yeah, well, I want all the mail come directly to you. Do not pass, <laughs> do, do not pass go. Go directly to Trillin. Do, do not collect. Um, I you... try... yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I was just saying, I, I uh, try to do uh, political mottos for administrations. When the Carter administration first floated this motto, a new foundation, uh, it turned out we had rejected that for our family. Uh, it reminded us of the foundation of the house, some contractor yeah. saying what you're going to need here is a new foundation. Uh, so we went back to the old motto, which is um, zip up your jacket. Uh, and we've used that very successfully. Yeah, I, um, I uh, More pithy, I, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've, been, I've been doing state models. You know, a lot of these states don't have models on their license plates. Have you noticed that? Some of them do. Some of them have very bad models. Pennsylvania used to have a wonderful motto, the Keystone State. You could just see those keystones being forged in the great forges of Pittsburgh and, and in the Pennsylvania Dutch country, these fields of keystones rippling in the, in the wind. And um, uh, they got rid of it. They have a, something like, you've got a friend in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. Your state d didn't have a motto at all, Nebraska. So I thought of a motto for it. Um, Not sure. No, I, I got one. It's I was a, a beef you know, state, I guess. It's a beef state. Nebraska, for its license plate, um, a long way across. <laughs> describes it. We'll be right back. Stay where you are. All right, we just have time to thank everyone. Uh, is this the book that you get the high two figures uh, for the for the column? Yes. Uh, yes. Funny stuff. With all due respect, more uncivil liberties by Calvin Trillin. Thanks for being here. Come back often. Thank you. Thank you. I'm humbled by that applause.